This is a 2020 Ram Rebel and still to this day I think this is one of the best looking trucks on the market today and this is not just any Ram Rebel this is my personal truck so what I want to do in this video is let you know how it's held up over the years I bought it with about 5,000 miles on the clock now we're approaching 40,000 miles so I want to let you know how it's held up why I decided to go with a Ram Rebel and also the mods that I put on this truck to make it into the vision that I wanted my truck to look like but first of all let's talk about the front end design the side view the rear and the interior then we're going to take this for a drive. Under the hood we have a 5.7 liter V8 putting out 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque connected to an 8-speed automatic transmission, 4-wheel drive with a locking rear differential. 0 to 60 takes about 6.4 seconds. Fuel economy comes in at 17 city 23 highway and the base price when this was new was $55,000. Starting with the front end design of the 2020 Ram Rebel, we do have a new one for I believe 2025 model year where they changed up a little bit. It makes it look more like a, in my opinion, a Dodge Durango. I'm definitely more of a fan of this generation than the new one that's coming out. We do have this big mustache in the middle of the grill, which some people don't really like, but I think it adds some personality to this truck and all the way down this being the blacked out package that we have here we have a black metal skid plate down low which normally is silver on other rebels we also have this big led headlights that as you can see sits in a horizontal way stretching out the front end and creating some more width in the front looking great normally in other trucks we do have this sitting more uh, in a vertical way for example the ford f-150 has more of a vertical line and i prefer to have it stretched out on the sides like we have here now this being the off-road trim level of the ram 1500 you can see that they carved out a portion down here in the bumper creating a better approach angle for the wheels i also changed out the wheels and tires we're going to talk more about that in just a second and as you can see i also installed a 20 inch light bar behind the lower section of the grill i think it looks so nice because when this is off let me show you let me turn it off when it's off you can barely tell that it's actually there so switch it off you can kind of see that something is sitting behind there but it doesn't destroy the beautiful design that we have in the front end and turning it on it just shines up the entire road ahead of you i also decided to install these aux beam light pods up here which adds some ditch lights to both sides of the road one design detail that i love of the rebel is that you see this hood we have these vents up here which unfortunately are fake but they look cool and then we have this chamfer going down here the metal ends here and then we have this big plastic chamfer coming out of the front end I just think it's a beautiful design and I think it looks not too aggressive it still has a pretty friendly look to it and that's what I love about the front end of the Rams coming up in personal to the headlight design of the 2020 ram rebel i love the leds that we have here because we have a thicker piece at the bottom a thinner piece up top that goes into a bit of a more thickness as we come closer to the grill these headlights is something that i noticed just recently is that if you look inside the headlight unit the light bulbs actually sit on the floor of the headlight shooting up and then they're mirrored to face to to shoot the light forward i think it's a pretty common thing but i ha just haven't noticed it on my own truck for a very long time further down we do have the uh, fog lights down here there are just a bunch of beautiful chamfers in the front end of the of the ram rebel and the ram 1500 in general i love this wing and then we have some sculpture on this specific segment this wing that sits underneath the headlight creating a clear connection to the chamfer that we have in the grill over here now coming around to the side view of the 2020 ram rebel and this has these standard typical truck proportions we have the three box design and i talked about that a lot when we're talking about sketching cars and vehicles if you want to sketch up a truck it's very easy to do because you have the first box being the hood where the engine sits obviously the second box being the greenhouse you just sketch out three boxes like this and then the third box being the bed back here and then you connect them with a couple of lines and boom you have yourself a truck now when this first came out in, in stock form it does have 33 inch Goodyear off-road tires with 18 inch I do believe the wheels are on the stock uh, Rebel but that's something that I wanted to immediately switch out because I think the 33s look a little bit too small for this specific truck so I wanted to put 35s on and I did that I put on Fury Country Hunter 
tires, 35 inches, as I said, with 20 inch fuel wheels. And I think these bronze wheels just add a little bit of color to the otherwise very blacked out Ram, which I like, but I also want to have a splash of different color. And I think the bronze with the black just sets this off exactly like I personally wanted. When I bought this truck, it came with these very ugly side steps. It looked like two, two tubes on both sides of the truck. Just, it was hanging underneath the truck. So I wanted to delete those. Yes, it makes it a little bit more difficult to jump up in the truck, but it does look a whole lot bad, better than having those on. And in my opinion, if it's such a small sacrifice to make it look that much better, I'm always going to do that. And from the angle that you're looking at this truck right now, you can see the skid plates underneath, the protective skid plates that are specific for the Ram Rebel. And we also have very nice line flow. Have a look at this line, cutting through the entire body, going straight in to the bed and then coming back here in this section as well, looking beautiful. We also have a nice line at the very low section. And what I think sets this design off in a very nice way are the 35 inch tires. But in order to fit those on here, I needed to level out the truck because otherwise the front tires would not fit and they would rub up against the interior walls of the wheel well. So let me show you in detail exactly what I did to fit the 35 inch tires onto this truck. Now, if you have a Ram 1500 or this generation, you want to fit 35 inch tires on there, you need to at least level the truck. I did not want to lift the truck. I didn't even want to have a three, four, five inch lift. Five inches is pretty a lot of lift, but I didn't want to have any of that. I just want to have it be leveled. When it comes stuck from the factory, the Ram Rebel and the 1500, they sit in a bit of a rake situation. So it sits higher in the back, lower in, in the front end. And I wanted to lift up the front end, which was also, as I said, necessary to fit these big 35 inch tires. So I did that. I bought a ready lift uh, lift kit. And once that was installed, there wasn't really a lot of issues with the 35 inch tires. I did have to cut some of the plastic of the inside uh, fenders here, but that was not a big deal. It's just plastic anyways, and it's easy to replace and you're never going to see it anyway. So again, if you want to put 35 inch tire wheels and tires on your Ram 1500, those are the minimum requirements. You need to level it and you probably will have to cut a little bit of this plastic that sits inside here. Last but not least, coming around to the rear view. Now, trucks generally do don't have a lot of styling in the rear because we have all this functionality being this entire section being a tailgate that needs to open. So if you want to have, for example, the taillights cutting into this section, it's going to be a lot more expensive to do that. So I think this is, again, one of the best looking rear ends of a truck of this size. We have nice LED taillights with some dynamic features to it because it goes from a little bit thicker down here and thinner in the side up to thick again. And we also have some nice styling in the, de in the deck lid as well because we have this line cutting down here, creating this nice wave design. In the previous generation, this line was completely straight, which still looked pretty good, but I think adding a little bit of styling to the rear end just adds more of this uh, organic feel in this other otherwise very static looking truck design. Some more features back here that I love about the Rebel that sets it apart from the rest of the 1500 lineup is that we do have these big Ram letters in the middle. Now, if you do have the option of having this split tailgate, you're not going to get these letters on your Rebel. Instead, you're just going to have a Ram logo right here in the middle. We do have the rear mounted camera located right here. What I love about this tail end are the dual exhaust pipes, bazooka tail pipes blacked out and in my case, something else that I didn't notice when I first bought the truck is that my neighbor told me, he said, your truck doesn't sound stock. And I said, yes, it is a stock exhaust on there. But then he went under there and had a look and realized that the muffler had been deleted. So it has a very deep V8 tone to it that I love. It's not too loud. It's not too obnoxious. It's just the right amount of rumble that I want to have for my Ram Rebel. Overall, I just love this truck over the years that I've had it. And now let's jump into the interior because I think the interior as well is one of the reasons why I bought this truck. So let's have a look at the details inside. Welcome to the interior of the 2020 Ram Rebel. And I think this, as I said, is one of the better interiors of 2020 because it has everything that I'm looking for personally in an interior of this era. So let's fire this up because it is pretty cold today. It's about 25 degrees outside. Starting up top, this is all soft touch material. We have a compartment here where I keep my shades, 
You also have a 12 volt cigarette outlet here. Coming further down, I do have the 12 inch infotainment screen, which is all touch screen. But the thing here is it does still have the physical buttons for the climate control settings. And that is something that I was looking for in the truck that I was buying. On the sides of the infotainment screen, you do have these uh, side vents, and I think it has this control panel look to it. Everything is integrated nicely, and it's just very easy to use. You have Apple CarPlay, which is not wireless in this case. You have to plug it in through the USB cable. But I still think today, in 2024, that this interior feels up to date. Now, the new Rebels, they do have a full digital gauge cluster, but in this case, I do have my screen in the middle, and I do have the analog tachometer, and the speedometer and if you watched my videos before you do know that I prefer that layout and that's exactly what I have here with a nice hat to it up top. Now this gauge cluster is completely customizable you can do whatever you want here you can change uh, the top corners to show you different settings in each little display which I think is fantastic. The center screen I always usually have it on the speedometer because I like to keep things pretty basic when it comes to the gauge cluster. To the right of the gauge cluster you find the start button you also have this gear selector right here so this has four wheel high four wheel low and two-wheel drive I have it in two-wheel drive for 99% of the time unless it's very slippery out then I put it in four-wheel drive and you also have a rear locker for the Rebel which is fantastic when you're out on the trails you get a little bit stuck you can't get out just lock the rear axle and you will be able to crawl yourself out of that hole Further down, we do have these buttons down here for tow haul and traction control off. And you have four USB slots in this area behind, uh, underneath the screen. Two U regular USBs and two USB-Cs. Another small little but important design detail that I love in here because it feels like the interior designer really had the customers in mind when they were designing this specific piece. And that is the holders for the cell phone. So you can put your cell phone down here and then it has this slot where the cable has a, a way of coming down and out without getting smushed. And all the way down here, you have a massive storage compartment. You have two cup holders. You can slide this whole section back and forth. You have some coin holders here, more storage, big armrest, leather wrapped with the Ram logo em embroidered into the armrest, looking fantastic. You have two sections here, one top level of storage where I have my headphones and stuff like that for the gym. And then if you open the big slot, you have a bigger storage underneath here where I keep all my winter stuff. So gloves and hats for when it gets really cold out. I have my backup stuff in there. Looking up top, I don't have a sunroof in this. And as you know, that is not something that I want either, but you can have this equipped with a big panoramic sunroof if you want to. Now coming over to the steering wheel, nice looking steering wheel it's just a proper not too big leather wrapped with all the buttons on the side here you have the gear selector here so if you go downhill for example if you go down pike's peak like i did the other day and you don't want to overheat your brakes you can just select your gears with these buttons here on the right side you have the controls for the cruise control settings on the right side right spoke of the steering wheel and the controls for adjusting the screen the gauge cluster on the left side with this beautiful embossed ram logo in the middle now the glove compartment situations in the ram 1500s are pretty cool you have one storage slot up top right here and then you have the big one glove compartment down low. Now coming around to the back seats, there is a lot of functionality here because what I love about the back seats is you can fold up both seats, the, the, the area that you're sitting on, you can fold them up into the backrest which creates a massive huge amount of space back there. I usually just have my dog, co dog cover on uh, in, in the back seat for Jules whenever she goes on rides with me. But this being a 1500 truck, you do have a plenty of space back here no problems at all with leg room or headroom me being 6'1 sitting behind my own driving position let's take the 2020 ram rebel my ram rebel for a drive the thing about this truck is the more, the longer I've owned it, the more I come to appreciate what this truck is capable of. I just love pretty much everything about it. And you might ask, did you have any issues uh, over your your ownership, over, over the time of your ownership? And I have had zero issues, thankfully. And hopefully that will 
stay that way for, for a long time. The only issues that I had was, as I said, I wouldn't really call them issues. Those were because of the mods that I made to the truck itself. For example, the wheels, I needed to level the, the truck and I knew that before I put the 35s on, but that, that, that was an easy fix. Just level the truck, put the 35s on there, and I had the, with the tent as well, and all the, the, RC, the RCI bed rack, the Smittybilt tent that I had in the back, that was exactly how I wanted my Ram to look like. Another reason why I bought this truck over the competitors is that we do have coil springs in the rear. And the reason why I think that is a benefit for my purposes is that I know I'm not gonna load the bed up with half a ton of stuff, so I don't need the leaf springs for 99.9% .9 of the time. And having coil springs in the rear is just gonna make for a much smoother ride and a little bit better handling than if you had uh, leaf springs in the rear. One thing that I was a little bit worried about when I was uh, shopping for the tire setup for, for this truck is, you know these trucks where you see the oversized tires and you hear them roll by, and it has this loud droning noise to it. Now the original tires, the Goodyear Wranglers, they were very quiet, even though they looked pretty aggressive when it comes to the tread uh, pattern on it. These are also pretty aggressive and they're not super expensive either. So I took a shot, I looked up the reviews of this because the last thing I wanted was to have those droning tires. And these have been surprisingly quiet the entire time. I put almost, 30,000 miles on these tires and I couldn't be happier with the uh, Fury Country Hunter tires that I have. And I do have a list of all the mods I've made. I could put all the entire list down in the description for this video if you wanna go and check them out. Another reason why I love the Ram is the noise. It just sounds so good. And as I said, my neighbor telling me that does not sound stock because he can hear me from the inside of his apartment in Florida when I was firing this up every time. And this, of course, is not, it's almost stock. It just has a muffler delete to it. And that noise, this is the noise that I want. Not too loud, not too much bangs and crackles, not too obnoxious. It's just the right amount of uh, rumble in, in the, when you delete the mufflers of the stock exhaust. It's just, it's, it's been good to me, this truck. It helped us move all the way, towing a trailer from Florida to Colorado. I have a lot of memories with this truck already from Georgia. We went up all across, not across the country, but up to Georgia, Kentucky, and across the entire almost country from Florida to, to Colorado now. It's just been a fantastic truck. I even took it up on the trails here the, the, the first months I got here and it performed really, really well. No problems at all with just deflate the tires and you can pretty much take this anywhere you want. The only issue that a truck like this has on the, on the trails is the wheelbase. So you, do, you don't have the same, uh, well, I'm not sure what that angle is called, but when you have a smaller, shorter wheelbase, of course, you're gonna be able to crawl over more stuff. But other than that, I never, I never had any issues with this truck and I still love it, as I said, more today than I did when I first bought the truck. It's also very, very quiet and comfortable if you want it to be. The wheels and tire setup, as I said, no problems at all with noise or anything, droning stuff. It's just going on highways on long road trips. To me, just it doesn't get any better than this because if you want to, you can stay on the highways and just cruise around. Or if you find yourself a trail off the highway, you can take the same vehicle and drive up that mountain if you want to. Handling is also surprisingly good on, on this type of truck. And that's another reason why I didn't want to lift the truck because I didn't want to have the handling being too uh, compromised too much. I wanted to keep it as low as possible while still fitting the 35 inch tires. And that's the reason why I went with the red lift. Uh, I think it's a two inch leveling kit. So you raise up the front bend by two inches and that's how you fit the 35 inch tires in the front. I know some people like to uh, lift it up three and a half inches all around and that looks pretty cool too. But then again, I removed the side steps. So it would be like climbing up a ladder if you want to jump up, uh, up and down the car. And my wife, Lindsay, she still thinks I should put the uh, side rails, the step, side steps back onto the truck, but that's not gonna happen. She has her car, 
she can do whatever she wants with that and this is my truck and I don't want to have those ugly side steps on the truck even though it means yes you're gonna have to grab the handle when you jump up in the truck overall I really have no complaints about this truck it's it's been a great vehicle for me and I love it I hope I get to keep it for a very long time I still today think this looks absolutely fantastic as long as you do the modifications you want to it like I did and turn it into the exact vision that you had for the truck thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video